The show's called First Pitch. I'm the Prez. Teddy Covers and Dave Kogan, both of them are already annoyed with me. Uh, Teddy being annoyed with me is uh, a regular occurrence, but Dave, very rarely annoyed with me. Anyway, uh, I'm excited, guys. Real quick, uh, the show First Pitch will start daily on April 8th. Uh, every single day, we're going to talk baseball. We're going to have Teddy, Dave, Brian Leonard, Tony, Marco, uh, <coughs> Drew, and a whole lot of other guys on. It'll be very similar to puck time. Uh, we will take apart the board on a daily basis. It will start on April 8th. Uh, today is our American League uh, preview show with Teddy and Dave Koken. Uh, the National League was already done. It's up at... Uh, Wager Talk TV, our YouTube channel where we look at the National League with Marco and Brian Leonard. Uh, boys, we'll start with you, Dave. How are you, my friend? I'm all right. I'm ready for the season to begin, although I'm enjoying the end of the college basketball season and uh, the NHL continues to be productive. So let's hope the same thing continues in baseball. Uh, Teddy, I know you're miserable. You're always miserable. It's part of your shtick. You're the only man that has an orgasm while crying. How are you? <laughs> I'm the only man that has an orgasm while crying? Well, yeah, because you're never happy. I'm happy all the time, Lawrence, just not usually when I'm talking to you. Well, it's a good thing you don't have orgasms with me either. <laughs> Very yeah, that, good. Thing. Yeah, that, well. Uh, boys, quick promo. Uh, MLB 200. Head over to wagertalk.com. Anybody's entire baseball season for $200 uh, off. Uh, MLB 200, $200 off uh, baseball season. Uh, Dave, before we get into the American League, we're going to do the win-loss uh, for every team down the board. Uh, I, I just want to know from you, because we spoke about it with Marco and Brian, you know, my opinion has always been uh, baseball is the best sport to bet. Uh, I, I talked a little bit about how I attack the season in the other show. Uh, what are your thoughts about baseball on a whole? Well, it's my favorite sport from a fan standpoint. Uh, my, I mean, my personal bet, I've, done, I've had my very good years in baseball, but my, I mean, my best sport is college football uh, from a handicapping standpoint, and that, that's not likely to change. But my favorite sport is baseball, and I can talk on anything in baseball endlessly because it is my favorite sport. So whether it's just betting or, uh, or just baseball, I'm in. Teddy, uh, what do you think about betting baseball? Uh, it's a grind, and we know that, but uh, it should be a profitable season almost every year. Well, that's the key to what, what you're talking about with baseball, because more than any other sport, you know, NFL's not a grind. College football's not a grind. College hoops, the, the season is manageable. NBA is something of a grind. Certainly baseball is the epitome of a grind. Baseball is not about... Uh, you know, these, uh, to me, it's about, do I go, how do I go two and one today? How do I go one and oh tomorrow? It's sh you're chipping away at a big giant sculpture that at the end of the season is going to be a bunch of profits and when things work right. But in my mind, baseball, nothing about the big picture. It's all about little picture stuff. What you do on a day in day out basis to put you in position to win that night, that week, and moving forward. Yeah, you don't bet hockey, but it is, it's so similar in every way. I mean, with the run line and, uh, you know, the money line and, and, and the grind, how many games are going a day, the concept of that starting pitcher being so important, uh, you know, with the, the goaltender so important in hockey. Uh, no, so that, oh, I, I, I don't agree with that. Uh, I think starting pitching is important, but if you're not factoring in the way the game's played now, if you're not factoring in bullpens in a big way on a daily basis, you, uh, you're not going to win. Okay, I mean it's it's a huge part of the component now. Sure, and I mean for from my personal standpoint, pitchers aren't priced wrong a whole lot when it right. comes to starting pitchers. Yeah. If you're looking for things that are being mispriced in the markets, it's not going to be starting pitching. It's going to be lineups and bullpen. Uh, and that's where I find my edge in MLB. It's not with starting pitchers. He's Teddy on the Prez, Dave Koken with us. It's first pitch. Uh, remember, guys, head over to wagertalk.com. Use the promo code MLB200. Uh, Dave, 
I got Bet365 up in front of me. Uh, basically, I'm going to throw teams and their over and under win-loss records at you right. guys in order. We'll start with you, Dave, and the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, their right. over and under uh, on the year is 59 and a half. Uh, this team is a disaster. Uh, we saw last year they really did nothing. They won 47 games. They might actually be worse this year. Uh I've got to look at under the total of 59 and a half here. What are your thoughts? Oh, I didn't get involved with the total. Um, you know, I mean, that's just, a, that's just an awful, awful low number to play yeah. under. Uh, but, I mean, they're, they're a terrible team. You just look at this, this lineup. I, you, the catching is below par. Chris Davis is only in the major leagues because he's got this enormous contract and they don't want to pay him not to play which is actually, if they were serious about winning, is exactly what they should do. Uh, Jonathan Villar is a, a, a journeyman. Uh, Renato Nunez is kind of an interesting guy at third base. He's got some power. Richie Martin is the new shortstop. He might actually be a decent player. I mean, he's not an all-star or anything like that. Uh, the outfield, Mancini, uh, he's just a guy. Cedric Mullins might be the most fun guy to watch on the team. He, he actually might be an upgrade defensively over Andrew Jones, who... Uh, uh, Adam Jones, I beg your pardon, who who certainly wasn't Andrew Jones in center field the last couple of years, and he has moved to Arizona and right field. Uh, I hope Joey Rickard gets playing time because he's from here in Las Vegas. Trumbo looks like he's going to go on the 60-day DL, so there goes the main power threat uh, on the team. The starting pitching is a disaster. The bullpen, I don't know, Michael Givens, I guess, is going to close the games if he has, if has, if has a chance to. I mean, it's just... I mean, there's just nothing positive on this team. They're complete. They're, they are the worst team in the major leagues, and arguably, they could be historically bad. So if I had to bet the, the, the total, I'd probably take the under. Yeah, uh, Teddy, and, and, 30 seconds or less on this one. Well, I mean, the, the, the thing with the Orioles that you have to remember, they're going to be traders at the, uh, they're going to be sellers at the trade deadline. Who wants the, to buy the, those guys? The organization <laughs> is as bad, I mean, we talk about the front office as bad as any in baseball, maybe the worst front office in MLB. Uh, and last year, we're talking about a team, they didn't just, we weren't just dead last in MLB. They were down 54 units. The second worst team, the Nationals, were down 25 units. So They, they don't even have a top prospect in the minor leagues right now. No, there's, no, there's nothing what? there. Uh, so I'm real. my hope is that the Orioles can hit. Because if they can hit, we'll be cashing tickets, betting Baltimore over the total on a game-in, game-out basis. They're not getting anyone out. No, great, great point. Uh, and I'm going to be looking at Baltimore over the total uh, on a game-to-game -game basis. And I already said in our last video with Marco and Brian Leonard, I, I like Atlanta uh, to be going over the total in a lot of games as well. Uh, Teddy, we'll go to you with the New York Yankees. Uh, 96 and a half to the over, but you're laying juice here. At minus 140, uh, the Yanks won 100 last year. I think they're going to be a better team than they were last year. Uh, I mean, they're going to be playing a lot of games against uh, Boston, but both Boston and the Yankees went over this number uh, last year. Uh, where are you going with the New York Yankees? Well, we haven't talked a lot about philosophy yet, and I kind of brought it up a little bit with the Orioles in terms of concepts. All right, this is a miserable, you know, the Orioles were a miserable team and they lost 53 units. And I'm like, all right, the very worst teams are not the teams you want to be betting on. Similarly, in MLB, when you talk about my philosophy, my strategy, the Yankees were a 100-win team last year. All right, teams don't get a whole lot better than that. 100-win team, they cost their backers 10 units for the season. All right, the starting pitching for the Yankees is priced so high they can win 100 games again, and they still won't be profitable. Do I want to step in front of teams like the Yankees? Not necessarily. Am I looking to fade the Yankees every night? No. But are the Yankees this bet on, we must bet this team every? No. If you bet the Yankees every game, you're not going to make money because you're laying $2 every night with a start. And and really, you know, there might be some good opportunities to fade some, some of these uh, uh, high-profile Yankee starters, guys with stellar advanced metrics like Luis Severino, who may not – be able to live up to those expectations in 2019. And I think, uh, go ahead, thing, Dave. Go ahead. 
Well, I think the Yankees, like what we were talking about with Baltimore, might be playing to the over more than the under uh, on a day-to-day basis. Dave, what are your thoughts? I mean, they're loaded, but they're also loaded with injury guys. And this is a this could be an issue for them. Uh, can Gary Sanchez stay healthy and improve on what he did last year? Uh, can they get production out of first base? Greg Bird's always hurt. Luke Voigt's been a nice story, but I don't know if that's a he's a keeper. Uh, uh, Tulowitzki don't know what he's got left at shortstop, and Didi Gregorius is going to be out for a good part of the season. Brett Gardner's aging. Um, Severino's starting the season hurt. Paxton always gets hurt. Tanaka's not a sure thing. Sabathia's hurt at the back of the rotation. Matanzas is hurt to start the season. I think there's a lot of question marks in terms of health on this team. Now, the one thing they do have, they got two great young players. And Gleyber Torres, Gleyber Torres, I think by the time we're having this conversation next year, Gleyber Torres will be one of the 25 best players in baseball. He is sensational. And Miguel Andujar looks like a star. Aaron Hicks has really started to come into his own in the outfield. I mean, they're, they're, they've got an easy path to the playoffs. But that's the one thing you have to worry about with, with betting this team over the total is they're almost a sure thing to make the playoffs right now. There's only like eight teams in the American League that are even competing to make the playoffs this year. So, you know, the Yankees can kind of coast through the regular season, as Boston can as well, and they'll be they'll be playing the postseason. To, so to me, you know, bear that in mind as you're approaching them on a daily basis this year. And they're going to be a team where you have to look at the lineup on a daily basis to see who's playing. And uh, it's definitely worth noting, Prez, when you talk about betting the Yankees over the total on a game-in, game-out basis, not with that bullpen. You know, oh, the Yankees right. have the best, as good a bullpen as any in baseball. And when you're looking for teams to bet over the totals, it's bad bullpen teams, not good bullpen teams. The Yankees are most assuredly a good bullpen team. I would guess, and again, it's we're, we're in March. I'm going to guess I have bets on fewer than 10 Yankee games this year, side or total. Actually, if you want to approach it from that standpoint, first five innings over yeah, yeah. might be more approachable. That bullpen is lights out. Uh, guys, we're not going to do every single uh, team in the American League. I'm just going to pick uh, a bunch of uh, ones that are of interest to most people and some that are interested interest to me. And let's start with the Blue Jays next. Uh, 75 and a half wins to the over, plus 110. The Blue Jays won 73 last year. Um, look, I don't think this is a good team, but I actually think they might be better than what people think. Uh, wow. You know, I mean, Stroman and Sanchez are absolutely crucial to that roster. Uh, I think that number is very good. I think it's pretty close to right on, and I don't know whether to go under or over. Dave? Well, I, I, I don't like their pitching at all. Uh, Stroman is, he's just a guy, okay? He's a, he's a fourth starter. Aaron Sanchez, you know, he'll look great for an inning, and then he can't find the strike zone. Uh, Shoemaker? is a health risk, to put it mildly. Clay Buckholz, you talk about the ultimate health risk. Yeah. And, you know, I good luck finding the fifth guy, whether it's Baruki or uh, uh, Reed Foley or Viglio. These are average guys. They've got a good young prospect behind the plate in Danny Jansen, uh, but he's going to have to shoulder a big load there. Uh, Smoke had one big year and has kind of leveled off from there. Travis is already hurt. Uh, Gurriel looks like he's... Might be pretty good. Brandon Drury is not a big league regular. Freddie Galvis is a, a fringe big league regular. So the left side of the infield is an issue. Billy McKinney has to prove he can play at this level. Randall Grichik, I think, could be the big star. Of the, there's the star. He's the star of the team. Is Randall Grichik? Okay, I mean, he's, and he's probably going to hit 30 home runs. But if that's your star, you got issues. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and and by the way. They're no sure thing to finish games off because Ken Giles, to me, is not a reliable. Oh, no, no they, they have a terrible bullpen. Uh, but, I mean, Bud Norris uh, somehow patched together about 20-something saves for the Cardinals, and then he fell apart in the second half. I think they're a bad baseball team, and they're lucky Baltimore's in the division, so they won't finish last. Uh, I didn't bet it under, but that's the only way I'd look. I mean, where are the wins going to come from? Uh, they they got to they gotta play almost 60 games against the Red Sox, Yankees, and Rays. Good luck with that. That's that, that. You're looking at 25 wins. If they do well, 25 and 35, or roughly that in those games. 
That's not a good way to, to get to the over. Uh, Teddy, uh, any thoughts? Funny. You don't got. It's okay. I I I, I can talk after Dave without you coming in and say, Ted, what do you think? Oh, uh, shut up, Teddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's okay. You, you can do it if you want to, Lawrence. <laughs> but it's funny. Dave doesn't like the uh, the starting staff. Dave doesn't like the bullpen. I don't like this lineup. You know. I, know. And, and I get. I mean, Grishik is your star. Good luck. You know. I mean, this is a. And, and the division is brutal. There's not a lot I liked about Toronto coming into the campaign, but again, I do a lot with totals, and in particular, I like overs. I like riding these over streaks. I don't see the Blue Jays as a team coming into the campaign that that is going to be an over type of team that I'm going to bet on a game in game out basis, and that's where the majority of my profits come in MLB action. Uh, Teddy, let's go to you with the Houston Astros. Last year, they were 103 wins to the 59 losses. Uh, the bookmakers have put their over and under at 96 and a half. Uh, they're just as good, if not better. Uh, they've just signed Verlander, uh, to keep him for a little while. You know, they, they play in, they, they don't play in the hardest division in baseball. I mean, I think, you know, we're going to see a lot of good stuff from the angels this year, but with, uh, Seattle, Oakland, uh, Texas and LA behind them, I think uh, the Astros are going to at least get close to that number, if not over it. Uh, what do you think about Houston on the over and under 96 and a half? Well, I mean, the American League is so interesting because right now, again, we're before opening day and four of the five playoff teams are already in. Yes. I mean, it, would take, it would take an epic meltdown. For the Astros not to make the playoffs. And I mean epic. It would take, you know, six guys getting hurt for the year and six guys having, you know, their worst season of their career for Houston not to win that division. They made all their money on the road last year. These teams, what, they won 57 road games, 25 units of profit on the highway. They were money losers at home. They were money losers despite the fact that they won 103 games. And again, when you say, how do I make a profit with this team? What are the roles that I'm looking for in this team? I ain't laying a home chalk price with the Astros. Uh, certainly if you did that a year ago, didn't serve you well. But like with many of these elite American League teams, there's not a whole lot of value betting on them. And these aren't the teams you want to be standing in front of. So again, with the Astros, like the Yankees, you're not going to see me get involved on a game in game out. I'll find a handful of Astros bets over the year, but maybe we'll find more than that. But coming into the campaign, in terms of my philosophy betting Houston, I don't have one. They're not a team that I think I'm going to be involved with a whole lot because they're priced like an elite team. They are an elite team. Problem solved. Uh, Dave, any thoughts on the Houston Astros? Yeah, I, uh, look, the top of the rotation is, is amazing. Verlander and Cole, as good as it gets. Then it gets interesting. Colin McHugh, uh, I guess he can be a third starter, but I'm not real high on him. Wade Miley was electric last year. I don't know where that came from. And I'm not sure Miley is a great fit for this ballpark. He can get pulled in that Crawford porch. Uh, he might give up some home runs this year. Uh, I like Brad Peacock a lot. I, I don't know why he doesn't get more use out of the Astros. I guess he's going to be in the rotation this year. And I think Peacock's, Peacock might be the value guy because I believe he can be the guy who will go out there and give you five or six solid innings in most of the starts. And then a, a decent bullpen takes over from there. So he won't be as high-priced. On a regular basis, it's Verlander and Cole. You, you're going to be talking $2 all the time with Verlander and Cole. Not so much with Peacock. Uh, the lineup, obviously, has very few holes. We'll see about the catching. Uh, Torino's, I guess he's good with pitchers. And that's they don't care if he hits or not. Uh, yeah, look, I mean, they're, they're, they're going to win the American League West, barring some kind of a disaster. I don't think Oakland's as good as they were last year, where they won a shitload of one-run games. And the same thing can be said for Seattle. They both had amazing records in one-run games. That usually doesn't repeat itself. So you might see some regression out of those teams. The Angels are okay, but I don't think they're, you know, I, I don't see them as a great team. And, and uh, uh, who am I leaving out in that division? The Rangers. Uh, Rangers. Oh, Texas, well, Texas can't play at all. So the Astros, good. they're going to win the division. Uh, and, and they're another team that will probably coast to the division title win. And that makes betting over the the, uh, uh, the total of the win props, kind of dicey. Uh, Teddy, let's talk about the LA Angels. Huge signing with Mike Trout. Now he's uh, there for a while. 
The team's clearly trying to improve. They were 80 and 82 last year. They're over an under total win a record. Uh, this year is 82 and a half. You know, I think the Angels are going to come in fired up. Uh, I think we're going to see them go over this number, uh, especially uh, with Oakland at 97 wins last year and Seattle at, at 89. I think we're going to see a regression with both uh, Oakland and Seattle, leaving a little bit of a hole for uh, the Angels to move up. I like over in the Angels at 82 and a half. It's one of the bets I like the most. I agree. Uh, I agree wholeheartedly. And and it really uh, comes a lot down to what we're seeing in the division around. <laughs> right. The, uh, yeah, where Oakland is clearly primed for at least some regression. I think they'll still be pretty good, uh, but I don't think they're getting the 90s this year. And the Mariners are a team that looks, you know, bet against from day one uh, in the AL West. Texas doesn't look particularly exciting. Uh, so that leaves room for a team like the Angels to come through. And, you know, some of the moves they made this offseason I thought were pretty darn good. You know, Matt Harvey might fit really well uh, in L.A. And when you look at that starting staff, you're not seeing guys, you know, you just talk about it. This guy's going to be priced minus $2 every game and Cole's going to be priced minus. Angels don't have that staff. So when you have a team that doesn't have the elite advanced metric guys up and down the rotation, those can be teams you can make money with if they're any good. L.A. certainly has that possibility. Yeah, I, I, I think it, they're a team on the upswing. The Trout signing is good for the whole team, not just because it's Mike Trout, but the fact that they know he's going to be there for the rest of his career. Yeah. You've got your leader in the clubhouse. I think Jonathan Lucroy still got some life left. Uh, and uh, is at least the equal of Maldonado. He's better offensively, and Maldonado is terrific handling pitchers, but Lucroy is as well. Pools, you know, he's going to hit 240, but he'll still knock the ball out of the park. Uh, Cozart. If he's on the field for the whole season, he's a good ball player. Simmons is a superstar. I mean, he's just, he's the best shortstop I've ever seen defensively. And he's become a good hitter. Uh, Justin Upton ran into the wall in a spring training game, so I don't, don't know what his status will be for a few days, but he'll be all right. Calhoun can't be as bad as he was in the first half last year where he was the worst hitter in baseball. He's hitting like 160. Uh, <laughs> well, he was. I mean, he was. I know, I know. When, when he's not you're the worst, worst hitter in baseball. When you're worse than Russell Martin, you are bad. Well, yeah. Uh, Otani uh, is going to be back to DH. You know, we'll see on the rotation. That so The rotation could be – that. that's going to be the vulnerability of the team. But there's a lot of teams that have bad rotations. You know, Matt Harvey, Skaggs, Cahill. Um, I, I like Felix Pena, by the way. If you're, a, if you're a fantasy player and you're looking for somebody at the end of your auction for a buck – Felix Pena might be a guy who get you some strikeouts and, and some decent outings. Uh, the bullpen, I don't know. You know, Cody Allen is, is closing now, and he might be declining. He wasn't great for the Indians last year, and, and his setup guys are questionable. But I do think this is – I think they're going to be the second-place team in that division. Oakland's pitching is awful. Okay, I, Oakland's going to – they're going to hit the snot out of the ball. They've got a really good offense. And, by the way, they can play defense. So their run prevention is going to be good. But I just, you know, Marco Estrada is your number two starter. Yeah. Uh, and again, I mentioned that Oakland was so good in one-run games last year. you got to think that that's going to regress. So I think the Angels might be the second best team in the division. Teddy, let's talk about the Cleveland Indians. You know, we spoke <clears throat> about the fact that uh, four of the five playoff teams are already set before the season starts. Uh, surely Cleveland is one of them. Uh, a really bad division uh, with the Twins, Tigers, White Sox, and Royals. Uh, all four of the teams below Cleveland are going to struggle uh, just to be 500. Uh, yeah, there's, the twi Twins will have a winning season. It, it'll be close. But there, there's, you know, the bottom line is there's a lot of wins in the AL Central alone for Cleveland. Uh, last year they were 91 and 71. Uh, now they're over and under is 90 and a half. Uh, I think like the LA Angels, I think over the total here is a good bet. I think Cleveland will be a better team than they were last year, Teddy. Really? Mm, I'm not sure of that. I, I'm going to disagree with that too. Well, bring yeah, it! Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll give, you, I'll give you mine right off the bat. This starting outfield stinks. Okay? To get Jake Bowers, 
who will move from first base to left field after coming over from Tampa. So we'll see what he can do defensively. Uh, he didn't hit much last year. I think he's got a live bat, but we'll have to wait and see. Leonis Martin is a, uh, or Greg Allen slash in center field. Might be pretty good defensively. Not sure what to get offensively. A lot of speed out of those guys. Tyler Naquin's now slated to start in right field. Uh, I guess maybe Carlos Gonzalez still has something left, but I'm not sure. I, I, I don't like their offense. Uh, and by the way, they got a huge scare yesterday when they had to cart Jose Ramirez off the field. Fortunately, the X-rays came back negative, but he's starting injured. Francisco Lindor is going to miss a little bit of time. The pitching is dynamite. I have no argument there. I mean, they're starting pitching. Teddy, I think it's arguably one through five. It could be as good as anybody's in baseball. And the bullpen should be okay. Not great, but okay. Uh, first five inning plays in the Indians under might be live. I don't, I don't like their offense particularly, and I love their starting pitching. So if you're looking for something to focus on with the Indians, that might be it. I think they could. Everybody's just conceding the division to them. I got to tell you something. I think the Twins might give them a chase. Now, I wouldn't be shocked in, in that regard either. And certainly, although, I mean, it's Cleveland's division from day one to lose. And when you look at that starting staff, here's the problem with the Indians, okay? We know they're good. We know the starting pitching is very good. Last year, they won 91 games, and they were number 28 out of 30 MLB teams in profitability. They cost their backers 25 units because... You're laying the price with Corey Kluber. You're laying the price with Carlos Carrasco. You're laying the price with Trevor Bauer. Yeah. And these aren't even $2. These are two, you know, you're laying $3 with uh, uh, all three of those guys on a consistent basis. The advanced metric stats are through the roof for those Cleveland starters. And that means it's really hard to find ways to back them profitably as any Indian supporter from last year will tell you. I don't expect Cleveland be a profitable team in 2019 any more than they were in 2018 i know they're going to be 28th in mlb but if you bet the indians game in game out you're going to come out of their regular season with less money than you started with he's teddy i'm the brez dave Koken with us uh it's first pitch guys remember we're going to be starting this show monday april 8th it'll go on every day we'll be taking apart uh the entire card on a monday to friday basis Guys, last team, and then we'll get to uh, winning the divisions, the Boston Red Sox. Uh, you know, we got the Yankees at 96 and a half uh, wins to, to the minus 140 big juice. Uh, Boston, though, at 94 and a half. Uh, last year, Boston won 108. That's a 14, 13, 14 game difference. Uh, Dave, I go to you first. I mean, surely the Red Sox have not... Uh, Fallen on hard times, if you will. Uh, is that number short? No, I, 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 it, it could be. I mean, they, they won the World Series last year, and there's usually a bit of regression. And, uh, but I, they're, they're loaded. So uh, there's, there's, uh, there's no weaknesses on the team. They've got this platoon at first base with Moreland and Pierce, which is, which is going to be good. Uh, Second base, they're hoping Pedroia gives them something. He's looked okay so far in limited spring training action. And he's, you know, one of the leaders in the team. Devers is going to get better. Bogarts is tremendous talent. The outfield is ridiculously good. Uh, the starting pitching is absurdly good. The bullpen is one area that they, they do have some concerns going into the season in the bullpen. And it'll be interesting to see how that plays out and whether they – I'm not sure what they'll do in the bullpen. Look, they'll buy if necessary. That's we know we know that about the Red Sox. But they did take a big hit to the bullpen. Kimbrell and Joe Kelly not there anymore. But you know, you, when you look at that lineup, it's like how do they not win 90 to 95 games anyway? And you know, the, but again, and this is the, I guess we're we're talking about the marquee teams in this report, and that's not where any of the money is in the American League. Hey, we talked about the Blue Jays. Yeah, well, they, well, yeah, okay, because you're, you're a Toronto guy. Uh, but to me, I mean, the Red Sox, it's, it's, we're, it's just rinse and repeat. It's just what we said about the Yankees and the Astros. And uh, Okay, uh, so Dave, let's... You're, you're, you're going to get overpriced every game. There's no value whatsoever. And if you just go up blindly bet the Red Sox every game, you'll probably lose money. 
Okay, Dave, so let's talk. Let's just open this up. Uh, what American League a win-loss uh, teams are you batting? Well, I've mentioned the Twins a few times. Yeah. And I, I like this team. And I, I'm not telling you that they're going to win the pennant, okay? It's, uh, but they're a team that is trying, first of all, in a league that's loaded with teams that are not really, literally not trying to win. Um, in a building for the future, the Twins are trying to win right now. And they want to make the playoffs this year. So I think that's a big incentive going in. You've got a potentially really good lineup here. Um, you know, Castro's good behind the plate. He's not going to hit a lot, but they've got depth at catcher. C.J. Krohn is not going to be a big average, but he can hit third home runs. Uh, Jonathan Scope can play some at second base. He's an upgrade over what they had. So now if, when he gets on the field, got to be better than he was last year. Polanco. Missed 80 games last year because he had a PED suspension. That kid's a good ball, ball player. He's out there for the full season now. Rosario is an overlooked star. Byron Buxton has a chance to break out. Max Kepler's getting better. They picked up Nelson Cruz, who's a stud at DH. Um, you know, uh, can the pitching staff... It, it, the pitching staff is, is, is not great, okay? But all it has to be is serviceable with what I think is a really good lineup. And by the way... I think they might have a halfway decent bullpen with a bunch of guys who can throw the ball and have decent command. I, I, I bet this team over the total, and I think that my opinion, I know this is a minority opinion, I think they've got a shot to catch Cleveland in that division. I really do. Uh, Teddy, any any teams that uh, you've bet over and unders on? Oh, uh, well, certainly sure there's something worth talking about. I mean, the White Sox right now. Oh. All right, I mean, they look awful. There's nothing like, you know, you just talked about Minnesota. And I'm with you, Dave, uh, on the Twins as being a bet on team. I look at Tampa Bay as a team that has real potential to make their backers money uh, in 2019. Uh, but this White Sox team, I can't figure out how they're going to win any games. Uh, you know, they look like Baltimore, but on the other side. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, so coming into the campaign in a bad division, in a division with a bunch of other teams that are in rebuilding mode or whatever you want to call them, I think you'll find some pretty good opportunities to bet against the White Sox on a game-in, game-out basis. They're a team I like under the total. Yeah, and uh, uh, the one team that you take those bottom three in the AL Central, they're, the White Sox are awful. I mean, I like Eloy Jimenez. He's going to be fat, fabulous, but there's just not a lot there. The Royals, they losing they lose Sal Perez for the season. is an enormous loss for them, and... You know, I mean, Whit Merrifield had this unbelievable year last year. I don't know if that's going to continue. So you look at the team that could sneak over the total from the back three, and it's probably the Tigers, who are not good, but are better than they were last year. Miguel Cabrera, if he can stay in the field, he's had a great spring, and he looks like he's really motivated to have a good year. Uh, Candelario might play a little bit. Harrison is Josh, – Josh Harrison's a good clubhouse guy who can help out. Uh, Nico Goodrum – can play anywhere in the field. He's an interesting young guy. Castellanos had a good season last year. Uh, <clears throat> Kristen Stewart's an interesting guy in the outfield. I mean, by no means am I trying to make it sound like the Tigers are good, but maybe, maybe they can get to 73, 74 wins and sneak over the total. And while they're at it, maybe provide a little value as a live dog at huge prices at times. He's Dave Koken. I'm the Prez. It's Teddy. You're watching First Pitch. The show starts Monday, April 8th. Uh, make sure to check back. And also, uh, guys, $200 off of any of our baseball uh, season. Uh, head over to wagertalk.com. Use the promo code MLB200. Guys, real quick, you know, you got the National League uh, winning divisions. You know, the Chicago Cubs favored at plus 210. Philly favorite at plus 180, and the Dodgers a huge uh, favorite at minus 140. But the AL, I mean, it's almost like there's nothing here. Uh, Cleveland at minus 400. You've both spoken about Minnesota. Uh, at plus 300, I'd like to know what you think. No, is that no, enough no, value? No, it no. isn't. No, I, um, I, I, uh, here's my take on, on uh, futures. Over and under win props, fine. Yep. Uh, I, not, I have not been a baseball future in years, and I think anybody who does is an idiot because you are getting completely screwed on, on the value. There are no great future bets anymore, uh, in, in my opinion. I don't, in, in, in any sport, 
uh, because the books years ago used to get very generous odds on these, and they got hammered. Okay, and those losses, you know, they, the bean counters look at that and say, well, what? I mean, why? How, how do we lose so much money? So they don't give you any prices right now. So yeah, do I like the twins? Yeah, but at three to one? No, I I, mean, I, I agree. I agree. Look, well, I think Tampa Bay. I, I like this Tampa Bay team. Teddy mentioned that he likes them. So do I. Uh, if you gave me a big enough price, I might take a shot with them. Even with the Red Sox and the Yankees in that division, I might look at them and say, you know what? They've got a shot to win 90, and if the other teams get un unlucky or have disappointing season, maybe they can sneak out the division. But you're not getting nearly enough to justify that. Yeah, plus 1,000. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me uh, let me go. This is really a, a pros versus Joe's thing. A, a professional betters versus recreational betters. The recreational betters they want to have that ticket. Oh, I got a twenty to one, and you put yeah. it on Twitter, and all your friends say you're so smart. The professional betters know that anytime you're talking about a a betting proposition with more than two outcomes, yes, no, over, under, this team wins, that team wins, the house takeout increases. When you have three choices, four choices, five choices. With all these divisions, there's five choices. You're not laying minus 110 with any team that you're taking. <laughs> you're laying minus 150 or minus 180. That's the type of juice you can't beat long term. Win totals are a great bet. Great bet. I make them in every sport. And just about every professional better that I know consistently gets involved with win totals because it's real simple. Here's your opinion on this team. They don't have to win the World Series you to cash your ticket. They don't have to lose 100 games you to cash your ticket. It's yes or no. They will go over this total. Minus 110. The rest of the bets on the future board aren't like that, and we don't bet them a whole lot, plain and simple. That's the show, my friends. First pitch part two, AL Central preview in the bag. Uh, Dave and Teddy, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, you'll be regulars, obviously, throughout the summer. Uh, and guys make, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You laugh all you want, big man. I pay your checks and you will be no, a regular. You don't pay my check. You know, <laughs> I write them. No, you don't even write them. I know. Cause they're wires. Yeah. You have nothing to do with it. I wire it. No, you don't. Who Marco does? Wire. Marco does. I wire Marco all the yeah, money. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure. Keep. Just keep figuring out how you're involved in, 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 in just keep patting yourself on the back. Try, you're so try great, to feel better about Teddy. your. <laughs> What's up? Try with to feel that? better about your uh, role in the in, in the organization. Hey, uh, you know, look, I, I'm going to be nice to Prez because no, because you know, the Maple Leafs are not going to win the Stanley Cup. The Blue Jays are going to be horrendous, and uh, the Argonauts probably won't be much good either. Hey. Yeah, and the Raptors ain't getting out of the second round. No, hey. No. You forgot a very important team. Who? Oh. Who was our last championship team? The oh, Leafs. Oh, I am, I, the Leafs. That oh, was 1967. Yeah, was, what the hell? I'm joking. That's a joke, dude. I was a teenager when the Leafs won the Stanley Cup last. <laughs> the Argos. The I Argos wasn't alive. Argos? Yeah, the Argos had a CFL title. Two years ago, the Toronto Football Club. We're out of here, boys. Thanks for the show. Teddy, stay on. We're going to do Morning Joe and the Pro. I'll call you right back. Hell of an ending there, uh, Dave. Hey, I'll see you on, uh, I don't know when I'll see you, Dave, but I'll see you in a couple of days. Yes, you will. See you. <laughs>